Call the, Thank you. Call the Rancho City Commission of April 10th, 2018 to order. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amy, we call the roll, please. Commissioner Chris here. Here. Commissioner Perry. Here. Commissioner Scott. Here. Commissioner Wall. Here. Here. <coughs> All here. First item on the agenda is public discussion. Items not on the agenda. Anybody have anything to bring forward? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yay. She's got stuff. She's, uh, she's got visuals. I got okay. stuff. Stuff. Yeah, Ted Zachary was my mentor. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it just won't come. Um, keep asking. Jody McGuire, Six Woodside. Happy spring for everyone. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to remind everyone fifth year going into our fifth Yay. year. Yay. So keep us in mind for donations, 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 and then come and spend your nickels and dollars and dimes with us. Um, we're, for those that maybe aren't familiar, we're a branch of the F um, Pleasant Ridge Foundation, totally volunteer run, and we operate on 100% donations, and 100% of our proceeds go back into the city and um, spent for community enhancement and services um, through the foundation, and we keep making the city as great as it can be, so we're proud to be an arm of that. Um, we are located at... 92 Amherst, and for those that aren't familiar, it's the very end of Amherst. We have ample parking by the tennis courts, and there's usually some street parking involved too, but um, we take donations every day that we have a sale. So look for these signs. They're posted throughout the city on sale days, and it's just a visual reminder to come on by and say hello. And then we're try going to try to mix it up a little bit this year. Our first sale will be a Friday evening from Ooh. 6. Fr awesome. I know. Mm. <laughs> Aren't we? We are bold. That is. From 6 to 8 p.m. <laughs> Friday, April 20th. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of hit us. And then you can go out and do the real Friday What time again was it? I'm from sorry. Si excuse me. 6 to 8 p.m. Friday, April 20th. And then um, our typical ticket. Um, kickoff date will be Saturday, April 25th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And this year again, we are um, doing a special fundraiser event for the first full day sale. And we do a sale co um, collaboratively with the Ferndale Fine Arts Boosters through, through the school system. And we give 50% of the proceeds mm -hmm. to the Fine Art Boosters. So um, as the community so generously gives to us, we like to give give back and uh, it's just a, a nice way to see people from in and outside of the community and to get our season kicked off. Um, all the dates are in the Ridger. If you can remember, we are always the second Saturday every month from April through October. Sometimes we get a November sale in depending on the temps <laughs> um, because uh, it can get a little chilly. So come on down, please um, continue to donate to us. We'll give you a tax form. So hopefully those still, you know, help on your donation <laughs> end. Um, we have great, yes. Will you be there uh, open on the garage sale day? We will be, we're always around on the garage sale day. Yep, yep. So if you can s get one more place, yeah, on your schedule, come on down. And um, we it's, it's just a feel good thing. We like to. We like to talk to everybody and see everybody. So thank you, thank you. Happy thank spring. You, thank you. Happy, you. happy um, this year for Rich Reese. Hi. Hi. Uh, Cheryl Ramos, uh, 59 Kensington. I had a question about the dog park. So um, last year-ish, the new dog park was redesigned it looks great love the small little dog park we have a new puppy Aww. and the new entrance is still not available power's been put in it's been in for a long time um, it's all chained up 
we have had a couple of experiences that have not been so good trying to take the puppy through the large dog park with very large dogs jumping on her she's screeching and running away and trying to get on us and you know save me type of thing uh, not been hurt we do know of instances where other small dogs have been hurt um, somebody on Sylvan's dog was attacked by a bigger dog $150 later an emergency vet same situation it's another small dog would have loved to have gone through the regular entrance where it's blocked off and can't get through to the big area you know big dogs think they're squirrels so <laughs> <laughs> so and, and no one was um, the owners were responsive which was good but I would just like to know when that is going to be opened Scott it would also right behind it would also assist with parking issues right. mm -hmm. which the police are my best friends because of that uh, people still park in our driveway they mm -hmm. block our garage we've had guests oh. we try to back out almost ran into somebody oh. and these are residents that are doing it oh. so it would assist with parking on our street as well since several residents don't have driveways mm -hmm. right. so in front or in back that's it. Um, All right. <laughs> so as soon as the weather breaks here then the pass card system is going to be installed down in that gate I'm waiting for it to just so it's not so it hasn't been so cold because it's a couple day install to do so um, we're basically putting the same type of uh, pass system over there that you use for the wellness center right now mm -hmm. so you'll be able to use that same tag actually oh, that will nice. be able to get you into there into the dog park so we'll differentiate between someone who's paid the fee you'll, and we'll know that um in the office here it has it's pretty robust we can cool. pick which gate opens up and whatnot so cool. um, will both good. gates still be available or just the new um right at first the the new one will be available and the old one will be available if you have that if you have the old card we're not going to like collect that card from you we're going to okay. give you a, a new one until i can get the wire down there it's all everything's wired so i just got to get a wire from that gate to the other one and just be able to hook it up so they'll both work it's just a matter of some logistics on um the install side so so eventually both will operate with the fob. both will operate with the fob yeah it's a matter of how i'm gonna do that wire so the new gate will only open with the new fob then correct yeah yeah so one would have to come down and swap their key out or you would just you'd come here and um come to city hall and um oh we just get it yeah and you just yeah. activate yeah if you have one for the wellness center we'll be able to look you up and we'll be able to activate it for uh for the dog park and that will also allow us to um so it will it won't be like the same time every year so if you renew on march 1st it'll be good for a year from march 1st to march 1st or if you renew on november 1st however um it'll be a year from when you renew it and then you'll get an automatic email and saying hey you got one week it's gonna expire well, that's good like that's that. cool so, mm -hmm. that's good so, so now we just have to hope for sunshine yeah you know i, was, I was thought for oh, sure yeah, that this weather that was going to change already and you know and i i do uh i do apologize it has been uh it's been a long time coming we were looking at a couple different systems and we ended up realizing that we can use the same thing that we have over there the wellness center be able to reuse That's those great. tags and um that is cool. get to that so great. Great. all right thank, thank you. you for coming thanks yeah so in the meantime let that dog really close mm. That's right. we haven't I'm taken it i wait till nobody's in there yeah. Uh, yeah. That's good. At least you can check on that. Yeah. Are there any? Yes, please. Something. Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this is the proper form to bring it up, but I figured well, I'd come sure sure it Your name and address, and then? Um, Mike Ross, and I live. my wife and I live at 19 Kensington. <coughs> Some of you may, may be familiar with the saga of the ducks that we have in our backyard. Um, Mr. Bruckman and I have exchanged a few emails about it. Um, Amanda, we haven't met, but we talked on the phone yeah. when several of your cases of wine showed up on my front porch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and he and told me about cases. it! <laughs> Didn't even take any of <laughs> So, anyway, to, uh, to, get, to get everyone up to speed on the, on the duck situation, we've had the ducks for six years. Um, before we got them, uh, to kind of cover my bases, I did send an email to I don't remember what it was, maybe just a generic like City of Pleasant Ridge, just to make sure um, that it was within the codes, because I, I, being a new homeowner, a new resident of the city, I didn't, wasn't sure where to look it up, all that stuff. So I sent an email, I never got a response, and right or wrong, 
probably wrong. I took that as a form of permission. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've had Dr. Said 16. It's, in <laughs> <laughs> it's in the air. So. So we've had the ducks for six years. They're lovely. They're very oh. cute. We have two of them. Um, they're really sweet. They cause zero trouble. Um, fast forward to a few weeks ago, or actually just recent years, um, realizing that rats have been an issue in the city of Pleasant Ridge, all over the place, really. Um, I've been doing everything I can, especially in the last few weeks, to... Um, I mean, I should have started earlier, yes, but in the last few weeks, I've gotten rid of uh, the hay bales that I would see them sort of running around in. I'd see the, you know, where they, their, their holes and nests had been. Uh, I have gotten a rat-proof duck feeder that uh, the, the rats cannot get to it. The ducks can. They figured it out. It took them a while. <laughs> um, so I've done all these things. In the last few weeks, I've seen zero rats, whereas before it was not terribly uncommon for me to look out the window and see a few rats running around. So I've seen zero rats, um, but two weeks ago, one of my neighbors did complain, I guess, about the ducks. And uh, I spoke to him about it, and I have a text message from him that says, we have no problem with the ducks, we love the ducks, we're just concerned about the rats. So um, I do understand that it's against the code. Um, I understand the code's not gonna change, because I know that you voted on it or something a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. So my request at this point, uh, my call it a plea, <laughs> uh, these ducks are considered, they would be considered geriatric at this point. The lifespan is eight to 10 years. They are seven and eight years old. There's just two of them, they're girls. Um, we consider them pets, not farm animals. Um, so really what my request is, getting the rat situation under control, uh, if we would be allowed to just keep these ducks for the remainder of their lives, so. That's where I'm at. <laughs> is 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 that? I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you guys decide these things or anything like that. But you look to our left. One more note that I have to make about them: uh, ducks do not like to be alone. So, on the on the um, extremely unlikely situation that they both just keel over at one time. Uh, if one of them goes, we'll find a place, you know, we don't have plans to get new docks, so we'll find a place to rehome the other. So it's probably a matter of, you know, maybe a couple months, maybe a year, maybe two tops that will continue to have these docks. So it would be like a notebook. That being ducks. the case. <laughs> oh, they both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like me to? Yes. Okay. Um, and, oh, and I do. Mr. Ross, we have exchanged uh, a couple emails. He did send an email to this effect for you know, can we basically is there a exception or variance process to the ordinance? Uh, this is actually something I need to talk to the city attorney about. It's just I one of those situations right. where. You know, the ordinance is the ordinance, and we have to, to follow it and use the procedures that we have in the ordinance. Um, so I will um, check back with Greg about that. We've had a few things to send to him lately, so um, this is probably lower on the list of priorities for things to look into, and uh, I know you're living with uncertainty right now, so uh, we want to come up with a, a definitive answer for you soon. So let me, let me confer with the city attorney about that, about what our options are here. Okay. And if there's anything we can kind of grant you to, you know, any kind of reprieve. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, the bi you know, obviously the issues. Uh, I'm glad you're addressing them because uh, that's a big part of the reason why we chose not to allow for right. non-domestic right. pets, basically, right. you know, the typical right. ones. So um, I'll get back to you soon. Okay. Right. I appreciate it. No. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, Thank, Thank you, you for okay. coming. If I may. I can yes. just yeah, a, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ross. Mr. Scott. Do, do you know where you would send the ducks in the event that? I have a few sure. things in mind that I haven't really checked up on yet. Okay. But uh, yeah, well, uh, we're, we're kind of working on it. Okay. When you talk to the city attorney, uh, maybe you could send them some pictures of how cute they are. Make <laughs> <laughs> uh, signs. Yeah, my reason. Maybe you should meet them. Yeah. 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 There you the go. Place. We may all just come on over. Yeah. Nineteen, yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> um, are there any other items for public comment? No.
All right, let's move on to governmental reports. Gary McGillivray is here. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I came for a couple reasons. First of all, I haven't been here in a long time, and I do Hi, apologize we've, we've for that. We've missed you. Yeah. We've missed you. Uh, we uh, tend to, I have four cities I have to cover, and they meet on Mondays and Tuesdays, both of them, so <laughs> I'm running around. Uh, three things I wanted to bring up. The first one was a local road uh, pilot program that we have. Uh, this was, this is supposed to be the last, no, next year is the last year of it, I think. Um, we put in a million and a half dollars, and it's a local match 50-50 for non-county roads. Um, the deadline to have your application in is April 20th, so make sure you get that in as soon as possible. Um, I, I checked this afternoon and yours hadn't come in yet, or at least the person I talked to said it hadn't been in. I'll send a doctor's note for uh, with the application. Oh, okay. we'll, we'll be getting it in soon. Um, Definitely by the deadline. Also, I wanted to mention um, we started a new program this year, which is for uh, drinking fountains for schools. Uh, and we had a good response from the schools. The application for that is also April 20th. But they've extended a little bit with schools. They don't have to pay anything for the fountains. It's just a matter of a, they're responsible for the installation. Um, so if you can pass it on to um, Ferndale Schools, um, their application had not been sent back in yet or the final process or whatever. So, But it's also available to uh, local municipalities. Uh, what it is is you will be able to buy the drinking fountains at uh, uh, like half the regular price wow. um, to install in your city halls or community centers or whatever it might be. And it's the kind of drinking fountains that have the uh, bottle filler on them, mm -hmm. which is the new type. And the last thing I wanted to mention is um, this coming Saturday, uh, Detroit Zoo is putting on a green fest. Mm -hmm. And we are partnering with them. And so we'll have lots of Oakland County folks over there as well. Uh, Parks and Recreation will have three bounce houses, as I understand it. Um, we're also going to have people there from DTE and Consumers Energy trying to tell folks how they can reduce their energy costs. Um, so if you get an opportunity, it's regular admittance price to go in, and it's open from 10 to 3 this Saturday. I think they have free poop to the first of thousand. Yes, they do. Oh, that's yeah. right. I didn't see that. Zoo poop. Hey, go early. <laughs> go early. Go early. Go early. Go off. And go. Any any questions? Please. Oh, thank no. you. No. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Sergeant Reed, please. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Uh, so the chief is out of town this week. So I have been sent in his place. That's good. Uh, he wanted me to advise everybody that it is Severe Weather Awareness Week. And just to let everybody know, at 1 p.m. tomorrow, don't freak out when you hear the outdoor warning system. Oh, uh, uh, Homeland Security uh, will be testing those sirens tomorrow at 1 p.m. Um, other than that, police department is doing well. Uh, just so that you are advised, in case you didn't know, uh, Officer Reed left us today at 4 p.m. She mm -hmm. is moving on to a, another jurisdiction for a full-time job, so it will be missed. Oh. Oh. Uh, other than that, just wanted to remind people, as always, uh, check your uh, Equifax or TransUnion, all the credit bureaus, because we are still getting a ton of ID thefts. Um, one thing I want to mention is if you see something come in your mail from unemployment benefits from the state of Michigan, do not throw it out. Open it up because we've been getting a lot of those where people have been opening unemployment benefits in somebody else's name and trying to get the money from that. Um, that will not show up on your credit report and it will just be a nightmare to try to clear yeah. up. And uh, the state of Michigan is less than helpful with us when we try to track down those people. So uh, just keep that in mind. So. so open it up. So what is it that you're we're receiving in the, may receive in the mayor? <laughs> if somebody did open unemployment benefits in your name, okay. you may receive something oh. at your address. So don't think that it's junk mail or something. It may actually be a statement saying, hey, you've applied for this so that you can try to stop it before that okay. money is sent out and compromise your ID even more. So. 
thing I, yeah. I heard on the radio that there's, there's a lot of unemployment. We've had a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So, wow. we, and I'm sure we'll start getting the tax ones in pretty soon as well mm -hmm. from where people have filed them. The state doesn't pay people unemployment. They screw those people. And that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be the last agency I'd try to get money out of. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. But that's it. Everything else is going well. Uh, Officer Hatfield that you met last month is uh, settled in nicely. And uh, our midnight guys are doing great. We haven't had any, um, well, I take that back. We had one larceny from auto from an unlocked car earlier, or I believe late last month. Mm -hmm. Um, but everything else is going well. So. Yeah, he's got the wave down. He, stops he does. He says the light. Yeah, he's doing no. really well. he Absolutely. He's doing really well. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, did any of you have any questions? Okay. Well, thank thanks you. very much. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Sir. Okay. Moving on. City Commission liaison reports. Start with Commissioner Scott and the Historical Commission. Yes, just a couple of uh, things uh, to uh, highlight this month. Uh, spring is quickly turning into summer. We're getting close to our uh, home and garden tour, so we wanted to alert everyone to mark your calendars uh, for June 2nd. We've got quite a diverse collection of homes throughout the city to uh, to see for this year, so uh, save uh, the date uh, for the tour. It should be a really good event, and uh, the proceeds always benefit things around the community, the uh, historical um, building that we have. And if you haven't been in there lately, and to check your records, uh, feel free to just step in or stop in and see uh, what we know about your home, what information we might have. And you might even want to just drop something in, like our current photo of your home so that uh, someone else in the future might uh, benefit from that current information. And uh, also on August 9th, something else to mark your calendar for is our uh, speaker series event where we're talking about kick houses. There are a lot of homes in town that were built from kit form at, at a point in time 100 years ago when Sears would literally mail you a home uh, and uh, you could put it together on your property uh, and uh, quite a few of them around town. So uh, if you're interested in seeing which homes started as Kit Homes and to learn a little bit about how Kit Homes came about, uh, set aside that date. It'll be at 7 p.m. at the Community Center, uh, August 9th. And I'll uh, mention it again in future meetings. It should be a lot of fun. Cool. That's it. Comments, questions? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks, lady. Commissioner Wall, Recreation. Hi, um, the summer program registration begins Monday. It's a great program if you have children. Um, it's probably a great program if you don't, but I think it's more applicable if you have children. <laughs> um, take advantage, you can register online or at Four Ridge, Pleasant Ridge Piranhas. The swim begins Monday too, online at four. Um, our next recreation meeting is Wednesday the 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, spring Bingo, May 3rd from 6 to 8, very exciting as well. And Citywide Garage Sale, May 12th for $25 a permit. And I'm also going to give a plug for the foundation. Our auction is uh, May 19th, very exciting, 80s. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> That's all I have. Very exciting, this time. 80s. Oh, no. Thank you. Any questions? Commissioner Krizyak, Ferndale Public Schools. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Metzger. Uh, the Ferndale School Board meeting was held on Monday, uh, March 19th, and one of my favorite parts of the meeting and very um, uh, enthusiastic description of the different buildings throughout the district, this month's selection was <laughs> CASA. Um, CASA is a um, inter-district uh, program Sorry. where um, it brings uh, students from local uh, neighboring districts, Ferndale, Berkeley, Clawson, uh, Lamphere, Madison, um, some other districts collaborate and they bring their uh, students together for elective classes on science, arts, um, and they had a really nice presentation on the programs offered for CASA, including um, classes which highlight the connections between uh, the student body and the community, uh, biology classes, uh, took, did a field trip to Forgotten Harvest and volunteered their time to learn about uh, harvesting products or um, crops for uh, distribution amongst uh, needy populations. There's also a field trip to uh, the Detroit Opera House. This was really incredible. Uh, the students at CASA were able to take a, a master class in contemporary in the in contemporary dance offered by the Paul Ta Taylor Dance Company 
and um, a fabulous collaboration that students in this area were able to participate in through the CASA program. So um, again, it's a jewel of the district and it's something that uh, really highlights the um, collaboration between neighboring districts and um, something that was highlighted during the point of pride section of the meeting. Uh, some upcoming, um, some more news. Uh, this was, this is something that is coming up. It's Tuesday, April 24th at Ferdale High School, 6.30 p.m. It's called <clears throat> Screenagers. And um, this is something that I think needs to run at my house 24 hours a day. It's uh, an examination of how technology is impacting our children's development and the challenges that parents face in this digital world. Um, so there'll be a screening of the movie Screenagers with a uh, discussion. And that is happening on April 24th. I'll write that down. Ferndale High School at 6.30. <laughs> um, and this is another great program. Um, the Ferndale Upper Elementary Schools Got Talent. I, I attended this event last year and I mean for a group of uh, middle schoolers to, to put together a show, it was about a three hour show last year and it was just spectacular. These kids, uh, the full range from singing to um, playing instruments, there was a magic portion of the show, it was just incredible. Um, so this year's show called Fuel's Got Talent will be on Saturday, April 28th at the Ferndale High School Auditorium at 6 p.m. And that is really, again, a great, uh, a great evening. And then music news, two Ferndale Orchestra students were nominated to participate in the Michigan Youth Arts Festival Honors Orchestra. They were selected from among the best student musicians in the state by virtue of their outstanding performances in the state solo and the ensemble festival. Uh, both of these students received first division ratings based on the proficiency scores. Aaron Isaacs and J Jacob Keener were both selected to represent Ferndale High School on, vi on the viola at the Honors Orchestra. Jacob Keener was also selected as the outstanding soloist and has an opportunity to audition to be able to perform as the featured soloist at the Michigan Youth Arts Gaelic Concert. So again, another example of the great work that's going on at Ferndale Schools and their music program. The Ferndale Impy Robotics team is preparing for the state competition after great performances at the regional events, including uh, winning the centerline competition. So um, that is also a point of pride for the district. And then the last item um, is the Ferndale Education Foundation Derby Party is coming up and it'll be held at the Pleasant Ridge Recreation Center for I think it's the second year in a row now. And uh, the host will be uh, Sabin, who will run the derby party and the evening. There will also be music by a DJ, so promises to be a lot of fun. Starts at 6 o'clock, runs till 10.30. Uh, there will be a strolling dinner, beer and wine on the premises. And that is $60 and, and goes to a wonderful organization. So that, again, is on Friday, April 27th at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Pleasant Ridge Recreation Center, and I know we're proud to host that event. So, yeah, and that's the second year for Saban, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. It's a big success last year. So. <clears throat> Any questions, comments? Uh, anything else about strategic planning? I know. Oh, yeah. I know they've got the big event on the 21st, I guess. Yes. Uh, thank you for reminding me, Mayor. Uh, the 21st will be an all day uh, workshop event for gathering input for the strategic planning process. There were three uh, input sessions. Uh, the last one, the third one, was added because of a uh, popular request. And this culminating session will bring all the ideas gathered in the input sessions. It'll bring all the stakeholders with uh, the, the Ferndale School Board and uh, they'll work on a collaborative vision for the strategic planning for the next five years for the district. So if you're interested in that, there's information on the Ferndale website. But a great opportunity to help shape the vision, participate in the vision for the district going forward. And I really appreciate okay. the reminder. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Thank they uh, need you to contact them in advance if you're planning to right. attend. <clears throat> yeah. I went to the um, uh, scavenger hunt. Yes. in the school and that was a very cool way to sort of learn a lot of different things about the school district and yeah the, and it was cool the school board is really excited about innovative ways of uh, 
interacting with the district and educating the stakeholders and yeah i think they're just looking for all different ways and this the scavenger hunt i did not attend but it's from everybody i heard it was a lot of fun and, and very informative yeah we were lost most of the time <laughs> we did not win that that's the best part we did win the creative part but that was it <laughs> we lost yes <laughs> Anything else for, for Jason? No. Okay, Commissioner Perry, Planning DDA. The uh, Planning Commission DDA did not meet this month, but um, the, our next meeting is April 23rd, on, um, um, which is a Monday, and we'll be here at 7 p.m. And I have two of the Planning and DDA Commissioners right here. Is there anything <laughs> I, I forgot hey, to tell hey, them? Tell <laughs> them no. no? We're good? Yeah. That's it? Okay, so hopefully we'll see you April 23rd. All right. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Um, just there are four items I just want to mention so you're all prepared. <coughs> Clean water action is going to be coming door to door starting tomorrow if, if they so choose through May the 31st. So they will have IDs um, with their name tags. You can call City Hall. They've already notified the police and everything. So if you have somebody come on your door, make sure that they identify themselves, but it is a clean water <coughs> they have approval to solicit, so just so you know. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Uh, Mayor? Oops. Yes. I, I request that we approve the consent agenda as it is. Second. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Sorry. I have the wrong agenda. May we take a vote? <laughs> Commissioner Perry? Yes. Commissioner Wall? Yes. Commissioner Kuziak? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Mayor Metzger? Yes. Motion approved. Next item on the agenda is the 2018 HMA resurfacing project bid alternates. I believe there's been some discussion around this, but um, Jim, do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> I'll say a couple things. Before? All right. <laughs> Thank you. With a name like HMA Asphalt Big Alternates. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Yeah. Um, these were included as alternates in the road project bid for this year, um, the Indiana Ridge and Bermuda reconstruction. These alternates were to do corner bump outs, basically, at the intersections of uh, Oakland, Elm, and Poplar Park at Ridge. Those are 36 foot wide uh, cross sections there, which is enough for parking on both sides and two travel lanes in the middle. Um, you may recall we did a pilot test in the fall. Uh, we adjusted the design that went in the final design that was uh, included in the bids. Based on that, we widened it a little bit from what was tested. Um, and it met all the engineering standards. It met all the standard engineering practices for normal streets. So it wasn't going to uh, impede vehicle traffic. It might be a little less comfortable than having 36 feet to you know trying to drive wherever you want to right now. Um, the reason for the uh, for the inclusion in the bid is because one of our priorities is promoting walkability in the city. Um, walkability is more than just a safety concern. You don't always have to have a demonstrated dangerous safety problem to improve walkability. Uh, shortening the crossing time uh, makes basically walking more comfortable. Uh, it would have added a little bit of green in these locations. So this is not a major um, issue. It wasn't a huge problem we were trying to solve, which is why we included them as alternates in the bid. Something that we could get prices for and then decided if we wanted to do or not. Last month, you decided uh, to postpone to get more uh, public input. I believe that you've gotten that through <laughs> one forum. We did not do a rigorous public input process on this because, again, it's a it's a choice. We're not solving a, a demonstrated huge issue. Uh, we're looking to make things better where we can if it makes sense. So I think that you've digested all the input you've received. We don't need to, to go over that. Um, it was uh, typically vocal, and I think uh, the majority was against, so we know that. Um, some interesting things I think going forward uh, that we'll take out of this is that, um, you know, we, we hear it all the time about how people speed on my street, uh, but then we also hear how uh, people tend to react against any changes that might impact how fast people drive on the street. It's, it's, a, it's a funny topic. So traffic calming as a topic in general, I think is something that, that we'll be taking a look at more rigorously. It, it really is a science. Road design is a science. Um, we know from 100 years of study on this what actions lead to what results. And what road design 
um, comes down to where the, where the choice is, is what are you prioritizing when you're designing a street? So are you designing, are you prioritizing free flow vehicle travel? Because that's how our streets are designed right now to, to accomplish free flow vehicle travel. We've got two lanes that are unimpeded in every direction on all streets in town. So you've got no uh, basically friction or you know anything to slow cars down. So we prioritized free flow vehicle travel above anything else in our street design. And again, that's a choice. Um, but when we talk about traffic calming, what it is, it's to applying the science and the things we know about how we design our streets and how that impacts how fast cars drive and the impact on the community. So we need to take a look and, and really quantify what that body of knowledge and research and study is, what our options are when we're looking at design for our streets, and then how we implement all of those various measures. There's a lot of tools in the toolbox that address different, different parts of traffic calming. You've got volume, you've got speed, and then you've got intersections. And those are three distinct components to traffic in general. And so you have to pick the right tool for the right problem. One of the things we continuously hear is about a stop sign at Oakland Park and Ridge. Um, we've actually had our traffic consultant study that. I got the final report uh, late yesterday about whether or not one of those stop signs is warranted. And with a stop sign, it's important to, to, that we all understand and keep in mind that, that stop signs are intersection control. They are not speed control, and they have no speed control function. Once you get more than 100 feet away on either side of that stop sign, cars are going to travel the same speed they were traveling before. Some studies find they actually travel faster because people try to make up for lost time for the stop that they had to make. So there, through the research and through all of our experience over the last 100 years, the uh, engineers have come up with warrants when a traffic stop, when a stop sign is warranted and needed. And you have to apply those. When a stop sign is warranted, it's obeyed and drivers don't ignore it, and it creates a safer condition at that intersection where you've got crossing movements, pedestrians crossing. So the number of cars, the number of cars that are entering from each leg of the intersection, the number of pedestrians you have, uh, whether cars are more heavily weighted from one road than the other road, if it's a two-way intersection, it can't be a two-way intersection, if it's a three-way intersection or a four-way intersection, all of those things come into consideration. So actually at Oakland Park and Ridge, a stop sign is not warranted there on Ridge. It's appropriate to have one on Oakland Park. One of the recommendations was that we put a, that we add a sign underneath the stop sign that says cross traffic does not stop. Uh, so that drivers entering on Oakland Park know that the cars across aren't gonna stop. But um, we don't have a demonstrated history of accidents there for vehicles. The crossing across Ridge is actually 10 feet shorter than the crossing across Oakland Park right now. So for a pedestrian to get across Ridge hasn't been an issue. Um, so, you know, we've studied that. To put a stop sign there where it's unwarranted you create a situation where drivers get frustrated and resentful and tend to blow the stop sign and ignore it and it creates a more dangerous situation because then you've got the presumption that that driver is going to stop and they may not. So that's the issue we actually run into on the stop signs on Woodward Heights, for example, where the Indiana Woodward Heights uh, stop sign is probably warranted, but I don't know that the stop sign that's on Woodward Heights at Bermuda is warranted. We've studied speeds. The speed, um, the distance between the two stop signs on Woodward Heights is 400 feet. So you've got 400 feet to stop, get back up to speed, and then stop again. In that 400 feet, when we put the speed counter out at the exact midpoint between the stop signs on Woodward Heights, the, uh, the 85th percentile speed was one and a half miles slower than it is on Ridge, where there's no stop signs. So cars in that 200 feet from the stop sign to the midpoint have accelerated up to the speed that cars travel on Ridge already. So the, the stop signs on, on Woodward Heights really aren't having a speed control measure. We know that Ridge is one of the fastest streets in town, and cars in 200 feet have accelerated up to that speed on Woodward Heights already. So, um, you know, our cops have to spend time patrolling those stop signs on Woodward Heights because cars are blowing them. So we need to look at those. Uh, that might not be the appropriate deployment of those stop signs. So, you know, that's just one specific example of some of the things we've heard. We're going to be putting together going forward um, an overview of all of these different traffic calming measures, all of the things we can do in town um, when appropriate, what the right tool for the job is, um, and then how we can approach deploying these um, as we do projects. Um, on Ridge, we're doing a few things as part of the project automatically. We're putting in a mid-block crossing at, at Roosevelt School because that's the right tool for that, that 
location where we have a pedestrian crossing that a lot of kids and parents are crossing every day. Um, and that will provide natural traffic calming there. Uh, but that's a point solution. You know, that's not going to slow down traffic on all of Ridge. It'll slow it down where we have a lot of pedestrian car um, interface. Uh, so we can look at all those things. We'll have a presentation and then uh, we'll have to talk about a method by which we can all agree that we'll deploy these in the future um, and how we go about doing that. So um, I guess that's my, my overview um, with that. You know, it's up to you guys if you want to do these projects, uh, the bump outs, the corner bump outs at, uh, at Ridge. And I'd be happy to answer any further questions you have. I know there's probably more than, you know, uh, you know a little more expansive than the specific issue at hand. But uh, again, um, let me know if there's any other questions you have. Before I ask for audience participation, are there any questions from any of us? You got something? Yeah, I would just like to ask, uh, and this is some, I'm glad uh, Sergeant Reed is here because I know it's something that uh, our residents rightfully want uh, updates on and just uh, reassurance on as far as enforcement. Uh, we've talked about uh, past locales. Um, our officers are constantly out there ticketing different locations. <laughs> Uh, can we speak specifically, either Sergeant Reed or um, our city manager, about plans for enforcement or adjusted enforcement, or you know, not to give the secrets away to the, all the speeders out there, but just our understanding at City Hall that enforcement is part of this. Right. Uh, yes, um, and actually, that's that's one thing I had on my bullet point list that I skipped over. So. I'm going to go back and hit that now. I've, I've spoken with Rob. Uh, Chief is on vacation this week, but I've spoken with Rob about this. And, and um, enforcement is a enforcement is aspirin. It's a band aid. It helps with the symptoms. It doesn't address the cause for the speeding problem. Um, and you know there is some halo effect they found in studies where you do stepped up enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, it lasts anywhere from a week to three weeks sometimes no halo enforcement at all. And then after that, car drivers are just going back to the, the speed they're at. So what that tells us is you have to constantly do it. Mm -hmm. And we know that we've got a lot of areas in town where there are traffic issues. We talked about Wilder Heights. Mm -hmm. We've got the Millington prohibited turn. Uh, we have, today we had an interesting call from a non-resident about people running red lights on the service drive. Yeah. You know, where you've got southbound Woodward Sorry. and people heading eastbound on the service drive. And we know that's an issue. So we've got that. We've got speeding on Ridge. We've got uh, Oakland Park and Oxford. We've measured a lot of our most notorious and uh, Sylvan uh, oh, yeah. on the other side here, too. Mm -hmm. We know where the notorious speed places are. Um, we've got our kind of standard street, residential street, that has a very consistent and similar speed profile throughout town because we've measured a lot of them. Mm -hmm. We know the streets that are issue streets. The, 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 um, you know, the issue we have is that we have one cop usually on duty who can do traffic enforcement. We usually, we now more often have two cops on duty, but you know, not doing mm -hmm. traffic patrol. We've got a lot of other things the police have to do as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend more time doing patrols on residential streets um, than we have in the past mm -hmm. to try to, 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 you know, increase the visibility of enforcement. Um, don't speed residents because we will ticket you now, but. Um, I don't think that's, it's not going to solve the problem, right? It's not a silver bullet that we can, it's not a magical cure right. that, you know, we can just put a cop out on every street all the time and, and stop the speeders. The biggest issue we run into is most people, the 85th percentile speed is uh, below 30 miles an hour on almost all of our streets. It's the five or 10 people a day who do 40 or 45. Mm -hmm. We can't stop all those people on all the streets. We can't be everywhere at all times. Right. So, you know, enforcement is something we can and will be doing more of. But again, it's not going to solve all the problems. Right. The way you solve the problems is through design, by making people feel like they need to drive 25 rather than feeling like they're comfortable driving at 35 or 40. You know, those kind of egregious right. speed violations. So, um, yes. And I don't know, Rob, if you have anything to, to add to that based on your experience in the field, but that's kind of what we've talked about internally. Um, City Manager's pretty much hit it. Yeah. I mean, we, we do bounce around. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're on Woodward Heights. We're on, well, I'm sure you've seen us outside your house. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we know where they're at, and it does happen. I mean, um, Jim and I have talked about it up at Millington. Um, mm -hmm. When we hit that hard for a couple weeks, 
it'll start to die off, and it's about three weeks later, then all of a sudden it starts to come back. So, I mean, it is a shell game that we're playing, but mm -hmm. I mean, our officers are out there. We are on those streets. We are enforcing. Um, we put the radar trailer out there to kind of make people aware of, yep. you know, oh, wait, well, look. Do you I think that's, is, the, is, is there research that, that that's effective? The, the permanent radar sign that, that we put up on the beach, yep. there is an effect on those. Yep. Those do have an effect. Gets my attention. The temporary trailers, you know, again, that has a, a temporary effect. Okay. But we are out there, so uh, even though we're stepping up enforcement on certain streets, yeah, upcoming, I mean, if you talk to the people on Woodward Heights, they see us out there a couple times yeah. a day. Anyways, I mean, we're, we're always at those stop signs. But, um, you know, I mean, things are going pretty decent. Uh, we are on the side streets as well yeah. as on Woodward, so but we will be stepping up uh, certain areas over the next few weeks, so. <clears throat> no, I appreciate that entirely, and I know our residents really appreciate you guys being out there. Uh, I just wanted Jim and, you know, you being here to, to just talk about it. When we talk about tools that we have in the toolbox, definitely enforcement is a, a part of that, you know? So Jim's points about design are substantial, and the reality of the situation we talked about, you know, what is, Ridge Road designed for. I mean, that is the speed basically that you're going to get is what the road is designed for. Um, and those are design issues that we have to address. And I feel in the bid we approved last week, or excuse me, last month, there were items, the striping, the crossing at the elementary school, those are just items inherently that are going to reduce the, uh, the speeds we're hoping we get a reduction in the speeds just by the design that we approved last month. Um, the one thing I, I appreciate Jim talking about and you talking about is that other tool in the toolbox. I mean, I we all know that there's areas that are patrolled heavy, not exclusively to Pleasant Ridge, but in our own commutes, in our daily lives, right? There are areas that have a reputation for uh, increased in enforcement. And my experience, uh, just anecdotal is I don't see too many people speeding in those locations now if you go two blocks over you may get an acceleration and a speed that is not safe but what I'm saying is I appreciate the job that the city manager has done I, I obviously I always appreciate the job the the police are doing as far as enforcement and I just want residents to know that we understand that that's part of how we solve this is with uh, enforcement so um, Jim didn't mention his notes, but I know it's something that we've talked about and we're cognizant of, and you know we we understand. So you're trying to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. One one thing I would like to point out is a lot of times we'll get calls about certain areas of like, hey, we have speeders on our street. It's not uncommon for me to pull over the caller for doing exactly what the caller has requested. <laughs> 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 and I actually have had people that were like, well, I didn't mean for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep that in mind you know a lot of the people that we do stop are residents of the street mm -hmm. you know a lot of people are under the assumption that it's people passing through a lot of it isn't it's your neighbors mm -hmm. so very important mm -hmm. all right thank, thank you. you thank you so in the audience please step forward good evening bob obringer from 22 oakland park uh, I'm here in my uh, unofficial capacity as the block captain, yeah. And uh, so when the agenda item came around or the issue came up, we sent in an email out to the street just to see what everybody thought. And a lot of people you know, were out of town, uh, the holiday or the vacation break. But we did receive 15 responses. All of them were very negative uh, about narrowing. Uh, the street apparently Oakland Park was part of the experiment or the test uh, I don't remember it uh, maybe I wasn't in town but um, definitely a number of residents were and uh, at least the 15 people that responded uh, well actually there were 16 Tom Troyer but I understand he's going to be here to speak for himself but uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you're on top yeah. So the 15 people were strongly against it, and this includes uh, people at the west end of the street who have minor children who are at that crosswalk 
and uh, they didn't see uh, any benefit to it uh, whatsoever. Uh, they thought the problem lay elsewhere and uh, lay elsewhere. And um, um, one of the residents who grew up here spent uh, a lot of years of her life uh, crossing uh, Oakland Park at Ridge uh, from the north side to the south side, going to Roosevelt and then on to uh, the high school or wherever uh, it was. And uh, she never noticed a problem. And then somebody else apparently who was a mathematics major figured out that the 20% reduction would amount to like two seconds or something like that. And uh, unless there was a history of uh, pedestrian incidents there, which I'm not aware of. Our girls went to Roosevelt for seven years, uh, 10 years altogether, and uh, gosh, uh, we never had any problem there. So in any event, uh, the people that have raised their voices are, are not excited about that, and actually they thought if there's 50 grand lying around, maybe we could give that to the Oakland Park Association because we could probably do some really great things uh, to do with that. So uh, keep that in mind. Thank you very much. I think the Sylvan Black Club already. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else want to? I guess Tom Schrader has to. I guess to. I get <laughs> Whether you're getting called out. Yeah. You're out. Yeah. Um, I almost think it was, I mean, I, I appreciate you're going online, uh, gone online with the thing, because I think that was a good idea. I mean, it, uh, it was a way of getting feedback, and that's what you wanted. So you got, you know, you certainly got the feedback. <laughs> I thought it was sort of ironic when people were talking a, a fair amount how uh, the city wasn't offering any data, or you didn't offer any data on some of this, and then they had all sorts of ideas that they, they thought were a good idea without any data, which was sort of ironic when you're only going to post this long, like you're not going to see through that. <laughs> um, I had a question for Jim. The money that we have, I know there was, I guess I'm, I'm kind of hearkening back to a, a planning meeting, if it wasn't the last one, it might have been the previous one, where we were kind of batting around ideas, and um, the money that we're getting from the state on this, is this something that can only be used like on our own streets or sidewalks, or our own pathways? Or is this something that could be used on a project that we were sponsoring that might be on like on a county road or a state road? We, it's Act 51 money, uh, partially, and partially it's infrastructure right. money. The Act 51 money is separated into major and local streets, and all of our streets are designated as either a major street or a local street, and you have yeah. to use the money from that fund for that street. Right. I don't know that we can, I don't know about Act 51 money on, on, on county streets. We don't have any county streets in town, so that's okay. kind of a moot point, but it'd be Woodward. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we could use Act 51 money on Woodward because that's a state road. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's, the, that's, now, that's, since we're the 50,000 and it's 18, 18, 18, it's, mm -hmm. you know, three, three buckets of 18,000 for the bump outs on the three streets. Right. Um, a lot of this project is coming from our infrastructure millage. Mm -hmm. That money we could spend on improvements at Woodward. So, you know, local government financing is you've got a lot of silos that have to be spent for only that, that thing, it. right? Got it. So the, uh, the money that comes from the infrastructure fund, which is funded by the infrastructure millage we all pay, mm -hmm. yeah, we could use that on a, on a non-city street. Yeah. The Act 51 major local street funds, I'm not sure. I'd have yeah. to look. And, and I realize that anything there would have to would require MDOT approval, and right. which is not easy or simple or without probably a, a fair amount of uh, uh, right. pain. But, um, I mean, I was thinking where we were kind of brainstorming ideas and we talked about eliminating that right turn lane on southbound Woodward to Oakland Park and then just to the south end of that corner where, we were, where that lane closes okay. off and making that available for pedestrians then to be able to walk out and reduce that walk by 12 feet on either side and especially on the on that cell side, I mean, that would be a really significant difference. And with people with kids in tow uh, going to the pool and dogs and joggers, I just thought that might be one place where we could look at putting some of that money if, uh, I, although, frankly, I'm not opposed to the notion of, of, of calming because after living for 34 or five years on Oakland Park, um, anything that could, by design, 
tend to slow down at least some of the traffic in Oakland Park would be would be pretty swell. Um, uh, I mean, we had I had one uh, one. We, we had one person rear-end us uh, passing another car when we were going into the driveway. So, yeah, yeah, because they thought they could, because it was wide enough, and they thought they could go that fast. Um, so, I mean, there there are reasons why why we'd want to do that, on, especially on the boulevard streets. But you know, I suppose it was a matter of maybe of timing and maybe being more in um, uh, had taking the opportunity to to bring people in at the at more in the front end and educate because I think your presentation tonight offered a lot more context for this which makes which makes good sense but yeah the, absolutely um, you know that I think the, the the bump outs weren't fundamentally changing the function of that corner yeah the test we did was narrower than the final design so the test I think created a sense that you know it was going to be right. more of an impactful yeah. thing so yeah, th yeah, this this one uh, you know didn't quite raise to the level of importance or change that we would have had a more robust process up front. Yeah. But we we have discussed you know, and that that is kind of what we're looking to do is for more um, impactful traffic calming measures. Right. The street would absolutely be more involved yeah. in those. And 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 to be to, to be even more specific, I think the the discussion on Facebook was pretty much limited to crossing time. Right. Yeah, because it was and that we're really talking about something that's a little bit uh, that is more inclusive. I mean, you talk about traffic calming, you talk about pedestrian safety to be sure, but but you're really talking about something a, a larger design issue, and I think that's how it has mm -hmm. to be approached, and then maybe it's better appreciated. But thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. I, you you bring up two issues that just. I've tried not to read the entire 200 and some odd responses, but uh, I've read enough of them. I think one thing that came out of this was the discussion of where money, what monies can be spent where. Yes. And that monies are allocated to certain buckets, and you can't right. say, I've got 50,000, so I want it to go over here, or right. I want to go at the pool, or I want to do this, or I want to build a... Uh, another playscape somewhere else. But these are buckets that have to stay in certain, I think, that that's something that, you know, I don't know how we inform people, but people need to understand that the budget is, mm -hmm. is set up that way, so it's not just um, general funds that can be spent anywhere. Um, and the other, the other thing is, is the issue of communication. I'm not sure, and we are going to be continuing to discuss this, how to get information, especially on issues like this, which is very complex. You can't put a letter in a water bill. And, and discuss right. this issue, and you can't necessarily, you can't, um, you can discuss it in a meeting, you can't have town meetings every every couple weeks on something, you can't put it in the ridger, otherwise we got to pay for that thing. And uh, you're going to make a book that we're going to put in the mail and send to everybody. So there, there are limitations on what we can, you know, what media we can use to get information out there, but we need to also know Facebook is not our preferred, you know, throw it out there because of the way, the kinds of responses and the way it just kind of feeds upon itself. And it does allow a lot of people who will not come to a meeting and show their face making comments. Right. They will never come here and say those comments, but they feel very good about putting them on Facebook. So the idea is, is really we need to have more discussions about how do people consume information about the city. And when I hear I don't have time to, to go to a meeting, I don't have time to watch a meeting, I don't have time to go to the website to find stuff, give it to me so that I can, you know, spoon feed it to me. You can't do that. So the question is how do people get their information? How do they want to get their information? Some people may not want to get it at all, but there are limitations. And we are talking about designing a new website for the city that will make it easier to get this kind of information hopefully out there, but a lot of people don't. Go to right. the web, you know, don't have internet, um, and so that's that's a bigger discussion that we have to have, and we'd like to have more people kind of when give us information. How how do you get information on the city when you're trying to get information? Do you, you know how would you like it presented? We can only you know we could sit here for five hours and do presentations and things, but if people aren't watching, if they don't get it on their cable station and they don't watch it on Facebook and they don't watch it um, live. 
I or read know, it. Right. Or read the, the documents minutes or go to the, you know, everything is on, you know, is on the city website. All the materials that we have, there's nothing that we have that the, that the residents don't have access to. But I know it's not necessarily easy to, to do that or find the time. So we are, we are very, hmm? You have no. to want to. You do. Yeah. It, you can't just pick and choose. Right. right. You know, you either want the information or you don't. And I think you guys are doing a great job of providing multiple options for people. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> we try. I mean, but, and, but and there are those out there that don't have access to right. computers and website. Right. I think of Kathy Gillis. I mean, right. she does sure. not. Right. So, I mean, she's a very important person in the neighborhood, as are many like her. Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 it's important to make sure we take care of those folks as well. Right. And I would expect so the City need, Commission yeah. to. So, we need to know how to, how to do that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I don't think anyone was requesting a personal spoon fed letter. I think, I don't believe that that was what was requested. So yeah, I, I, right, I, I right, actually I, take I, exception to that statement of no, being no, spoon-fed because that's not well, what anyone is looking for. Right. I mean, but, the but, proper but there are certain things that if, you know, the various options are not there. I mean, options of putting something, mm -hmm. thinking three months ahead and putting it in a water bill, it, you know, those a, kinds of things. I mean, there are play, there's a place for that, you know, and certain things can operate that way. The question is what, you know, there if you give them 10 options, you know, is that enough? Or does somebody want an 11th option or a 12th option? That's, that's the question, is how do people want their information? If they want it, how do we get it to them and make sure that Correct. they get it? So that's, and I, and that's I totally agree with that. And I think you guys have done a very good job in the past with big issues that have to come Sorry. No, yeah, Loretta Lenko, yeah. 32 yeah. Oakland Park, sorry. I, I think you've done a very good job in the past in terms of communicating big issues every little issue people maybe don't watch every month or don't come every month but when there's a big issue and safety i would think would be a big issue that should be a town hall and that should be put on signs like you do for other coffee clutches and things like that to say hey we're going to be talking about something very important it's not just for the safety of our of our children and our elderly and our all of our folks but it's also for our experience as a city as well and i think this was just just a very uh, shocking thing to see that on Facebook and I think extremely insulting comments that ex that that came as part of it right. Facebook begets that so I would not ever recommend Facebook as being the method <laughs> and and you would agree no, right? no it was like <laughs> recommendations were thrown out like accusations so yeah it was pretty tough it, it was tough and yeah. and it's it's like what is the real issue here mm -hmm. you, you right. couldn't even sort through right. it to figure out what the real problem was where this came from why it came about why are we doing this? And you know, seeing that picture of that draw you know, and, and living through that test, it was awful. And I'm like, oh my God, they're going to do it. I can't believe it. You know, so because I lived through that, and it was it was not a good situation. I mean, we had to literally come to a stop in order to make that right hand turn. And and you know, if that's what the experts say is the best way to do it after a thorough understanding, then I'll be okay with it. But I just think it was no information, no communication. And Facebook, I would, I would just strongly encourage or recommend not to communicate those types of things on Facebook because it just, it just well, we, does, and it creates a, a, a division in the city oh, that was, is yeah. totally that, unnecessary. That was very clear. We're all trying to be, <laughs> right. you know, friends, and <laughs> right. It's, <laughs> it's like, oh my God. It is, it is fascinating, isn't it? It, it is. Wonderful. But yeah, that would, and it was a very unfortunate. It was part of, you know, last month we tabled it. And we came, you know, Jim and I are talking, it's about a week and a, a week before the meeting. Nobody has said anything, nobody's gone to any materials, he hasn't heard anything from anybody. So we decided, yeah. I, you know, we could have, should have, in, in hindsight, given a much longer, longer explanation. It was not, last month we decided it wasn't, wor wasn't worthy of a town hall and, and all that. We decided not to do that because of all that's entailed in that. But, Obviously, um, Facebook wasn't the answer yeah, either, um, or at least the way it, it came out. So. And I give you credit for trying to get the input. Well, I think I think that's the right thing <laughs> well, to we do. Well, we did get input. Is get right? the input. Yeah. You, you got. Yes. You did. Yeah. yeah. I, I think what we did on our block, which what Bob did, is put a letter out to everyone and just say, "Hey, weigh in on mm -hmm. this." And it was, you know, just emails back. Facebook just is 
a nasty venue. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook every day with my family and friends, right. Right. but when it gets to the city stuff, it's just extremely nasty, and I, I don't know why it does, why it's that way, but it just is, and, yeah. and it yeah. really was an uncomfortable well, situation. I, I promise I'm not going to Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> communication is good. Don't get me wrong. We're not against communication. It's nice right. to see people that I haven't seen in a long time yeah. <laughs> yeah. show up on Facebook. Please. Um, Jody sure. McGuire, Six Woodside. It, yeah. it harkens back to the whole block club. I mean, Bob, I think we're, we're losing uh, <coughs> yeah. maybe an important kernel here. We were talking about block club mm -hmm. building and enhancing that communication. And if we ever got as a, a city block club representation mm -hmm. and really went street by street, could this be something that's disseminated with block clubs? You get feedback and it's it's mm -hmm. more of like mini right. town halls, block mm -hmm. to block, that's, and then bring that's a great, that's information. That's a good idea because then people on blocks know who is on the internet and who's not on the internet and how people exactly. get their information. Well, exactly. And you can I talk. Know, we know just, who to take just it just through. Get more so it's not an easy fix, we, no, we but if we were kind that. of looking at that, it's um, a good suggestion, maybe it's though, an Jody. An, something to enhance. We, we tried to talk, we talked about more block clubs in in connection with the Neighborhood Watch program mm -hmm. and, and so I think we'll have to start to yep. bring that when we do major street projects yep. it's almost a block club party it meaning is. that <laughs> yeah, we call uh, meetings together right. so that people are uh, informed of what we're doing with the streets and the sidewalks and everything yeah. and everyone on the street has an opportunity to weigh in and, and understand what's happening and in this case the change wasn't perceived to be big enough to have that but in hindsight we now know right. that and I think I said in an email, you know, uh, people see their streets, their sidewalks as an extension to their homes in Pleasant Ridge, really. Mm -hmm. So they have a similar importance. So and in a very fun way, there's the Block Club Challenge for the auction. Yeah. And, you know, a few blocks really like to put something together. It's going, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, some of you are right yeah. up there. <laughs> on the, on, so, I mean, yeah. maybe it's just something that we should yeah. pour yeah. some time and energy into. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. You're welcome. Any other comments? Richard. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Richard Burr, 48 Woodward Heights. Just a quick note, I come here speaking in favor of Facebook. I don't mind that you put the question on Facebook. I don't mind that there were rude comments on there. <laughs> Democracy is messy. I've seen plenty of commission meetings where messy comments were made and people got all upset, and that's part of democracy. Figure out the different avenues for sharing information. Let us know about it. Some people are going to choose to be ignorant and not have their voices represented. You do the best you can to reflect that, and you have your names on the ballot box. Take care of it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> Any other well, comments? Except I wouldn't oh. call it ignorance. Come on, Loretta. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, that's extremely uh -huh. insulting. It is. Through the chair. I'm sorry. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's just. Not a, not the right venue for. I, I really don't believe it is. Fair enough. Okay. Are there any other comments? Okay. Well, do I have a motion? <laughs> <laughs> no motion. Right. Nobody wants to make a motion to move forward. So. Well, all right, I motion that we do not move forward with item number uh, eight. All right, is there support? No support. Okay, any discussion? Do you want to, do you want to say? Sure, please. Um, I would just like to say I really appreciate everyone coming out and, and participating in this way. Um, Mr. Uh, Burr, to your comments about Democracy is messy. I am a full believer in that. Um, but I, I also believe that with democracy comes some responsibility as far as how we treat each other, how we communicate with each other. And the next agenda item will be will be discussing um, our goals and objectives as the, the five elected officials. We have five main bullet points. Um, the one that I always tend to gravitate to, although they're all really good is foster community trust and participation and for me that is constantly a work in progress like we're constantly working on ways to better 
do that and exemplify that goal. I really believe that um, the mayor's attempt and Commissioner Scott's attempt to um, delay the vote a month for citizen input was based exactly on that ideal of community trust and participation. Um, again, we're up here, that's what we're stated goals. Everyone in the community, you know, you're on your own. I mean, you, you're, you're individual actors and, and you will engage with the city and you'll engage with each other um, based on your own um, comfort levels. I would hope that the five of us up here, our police department, our, our city administration can kind of set some example, you know, and we, I really believe we try to do that. Um, we're human beings, we don't always succeed. But um, yeah, I want to find different ways. Um, uh, Loretta has brought up good points and there's good points about the limits of Facebook. I think Facebook, and not just Facebook, I mean, because we'll see tomorrow after uh, Zuckerberg gets done testifying <laughs> in Congress what Facebook looks like tomorrow, but... Just don't uh, start tweeting. Yes, exactly. That really elevates the discussion. Right, yeah, tweeting is the next level. <laughs> we never get a tweet out. Yeah. Yeah. No tweets here, man. We never have been, there. there won't be. Right. I just want to assure everybody that um, that was really what I took last month's deliberation on this particular issue and then the subsequent discussion was in that vein to kind of invite participation and foster community trust. So going forward, I think not only is this a learning lesson on traffic calming measures and what is the smart solutions for our overall objectives citywide, but I think it was, always, it was also a learning environment for us to kind of navigate some more of this, how do we get participation? How do we maximize community participation? Because this has been you know, it's not a frustration, it's just you, you want people to participate, you want people to be informed, but like the mayor was saying, you can't just, um, you know, sit down with everybody. Although, I guess we could knock well, on some more. we tried to have the coffees right. and that did not. <laughs> well, right, so I just want to assure everyone that we're, 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 we have the intentions of increasing participation, how we do that. If you guys help us with that, I think that will help us. So. I appreciate all the feedback tonight. I appreciate the feedback that was garnered online, the emails. Although I think technically we only got one email on this issue. Two. Two, two emails? At least two. Two emails. Two. One did not go to Amy. You got one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we got two that were in support mm -hmm. of the issue, which I don't know. Are you done? Am I done? Keep uh, going. Keep going. <laughs> no, I mean, I those one. were just my thoughts. He's done. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will wrap up and say on the point of this actual improvement, um, to me, I think Jim has made a fantastic case for the science. For me, it was a point of um, are we getting enough of a benefit? And I, in the, t in the report that uh, was provided as far as what the one that Jim was speaking, and I hope maybe we can make, can we include that in a packet somehow or somewhere where residents can reference the letter that was received on April 10th from um, that you were talking about the results. The stop sign evaluation? Oh, yeah. Yeah, could we somehow make that available? We'll include that as we go forward with this. Okay. Broader. Because that has a good breakdown mm -hmm. on why um, stop signs are not necessarily there. Right. That's and, and in the longer run, you know, that's one of the things that we want to try to push out there is what is the, you know, there's the Michigan man, U Michigan manual on uniform traffic control devices. <laughs> it's the Bible. Like to put up a, so a street sign, you have to comply with that. Right. So right. this evaluation that the engineer did that we just received for yes. Oakland Park will be part of what we push out because it's all part of the bigger story. Of the Good, because that was very helpful for me. This is just specifically the letter from right. Patrick Colley. And, and I think, yes, from Pat Colley. And I right. think that's a good point. You know, the stop sign evaluation there is really something that you have to meet the certain things in order to be able to do. Right. The whole point of this discussion we're having about the corner bump outs is those truly are a choice, mm -hmm. whether we do them or not. Right. You know, they're designed with all the engineering standards for turning radius and access and, you know, the test we did was probably, you know, we pushed the envelope a little too far on mm -hmm. that. I think when we designed the test, because we were testing it, it didn't work. 
created a bad t taste in people's mouths to be sure. The engineering design on this was going to be fine, mm -hmm. but clearly it's not preferred. And, and mm -hmm. again, that's this is a choice. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Well, the 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 letter, the Carly letter, I think really breaks it down. And for me, it's the the crash history. Right. Three years. There were. And from 2015 to 2017, there were three incidences, right? And that's the one that says, during this time period, three crashes occurred in the vicinity of, vicinity of the intersection. Two were rear end crashes. Um, the third crash involved the failure to lead, to yield. Um, so for me, over three years, um, for the benefits that we would uh, receive for a project that was gonna cost X amount of dollars, to me, the tipping point was that it was, I didn't feel we were gonna get as big of a safety bang um, than, than I would appreciate. And then also, and this is the, the month of uh, resident impact, I also believe that the residents do have a say in these issues, especially when there's a, a choice, like, like, we were, we, like we've established, this wasn't gonna substantially increase the safety at this location, so it was more of, do we want to incorporate this as part of an overall plan, which I'm eager to participate in. I'm eager to you know, invite residents to follow along as we develop our uh, policy more generally. But for me, having the residents so weighed against this, to me was, was the tipping point to say, you know what, we'll cool our jets on this, we'll develop a, a overall strategy, we'll invite residents to participate in that, and then we'll see where we can knock off some of these items so for me i'm i'm glad that we were able to incorporate the residents in this discussion and i'm confident going forward that through jim's leadership and and the data on you know how we accomplish some of these things um you know we'll 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 accomplish these uh measures long term so thank you mayor um I think um, excellent points were made. I think one of the things about Facebook, where I totally do believe Facebook is a good forum, I think you know the hard thing is, honestly for me, is it makes me develop a thick skin because I have to just like not respond and not react to it because it does. People get strangely insulting on Facebook, which you know that's why you know one of the things the the moderators do on the PRPR pages they don't allow people on who don't use their real name because it's like at least you have to own it and there was one person who wanted to do it and not own it and so then I made him use his real name every time and he was very then got silly about it and then realized he it, it just goes south fast but it's important people have to remember these are your neighbors um, it is an important communication tool I think it, you're right, it can't be the only one, I think. And then we, the bigger discussion we were all having was the quorum issue. And so yeah. it was very frustrating to me because I couldn't present one of the main arguments, um, which was, and you actually made a good point, Loretta, was that it was so uncomfortable you had to come to a complete stop. Well, it's like, that's what we want. You know, we want it to be a, a little bit uncomfortable no. to make you really slow down. No, no, sorry. From Ridge Road turning right, there yes. is no stop sign. You don't have to come to a complete stop. Sorry, the oh. other direction. Yeah. Which I, is I okay. Didn't, I didn't make it clear. Right. When no, I, but that's perfect, too, because that's helping slow down Ridge Road traffic. It's like, it's like when you can take that turn at 30 miles an yeah, hour, yeah. that's not happy. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, not I a good thing. No, I, so, well, it's like, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I, so I that agree. was my point that I could not get on there and sort of, and, and make that point of, you know, don't forget this is also about, we are really concerned about the speed on Ridge Road. And, you know, whatever ways, you know, if people have to slow down a lot at Oakland Park Boulevard and at Elm Park Boulevard and at uh, Poplar Park, in and out and whatever, those are all benefits to the situation. Um, well, that's why I don't think this is a bad idea. I think, yeah, it's like if the test was squeezed it too much and left a bad taste in Oakland Park Boulevard's uh, mouths, I totally understand. But it's one of those things, it's like, I think it is it is important that we, we look at, you know, it, I think the city as a whole, I mean, Amanda heard it a lot when she was campaigning. We all hear it every day, is that, you know, there are, I believe the residents of the cities really do want to reduce the 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 speed no on a lot of the streets. There. No argument. There. And it's like there there's no magic pill for that. And I think what we have to do is when we're talking about traffic calming, you know, in gen it's 
it's like we have to take these small steps and something like that and we you know of course we'd make sure that it isn't you know so awkward that you can't make the turn but we would want it to be something that you know we want to have these impacts and it's hard you know the hard thing on facebook was the forum issue and we're not sure i mean it was funny amanda just went to the mml thing uh training and they brought it up and they said yeah, the, you know, discussed it, and they did not have a solid answer. It was like so, a yeah. zero takeaway. Yeah. yeah. So, I, and it's okay to communicate out, yeah. you know, to, to the, the, you know, whatever's going on in the city, communicate it out, but to ask for stuff coming back in, I think that's where it gets a little dicey. Yeah, yeah, no, from a, I from mean. From an open meetings perspective. But it's like, and we all know, it's like, we had 260 um, comments. Can, so. We need to stop the crosstalk. Yeah. Because oh, there's a motion on the table. Mm -hmm. okay, We're not sorry. in public okay. comment anymore. Sorry, but we so, really should. Okay. So, um, uh, so actually, I think I got to all my points. So basically, I don't think it's a bad idea. I, obviously, this is probably not the time for it. So thank you, though. Any other discussions before we put? We have a just a real quick question. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, I don't think Facebook is a bad tool to use for feedback. It can't be the only tool, and there are actually ways to use fa Facebook to get analytics out of it, so that we get uh, you know true measurement of how people are feeling, in addition to the comments that come along with it. So I would not want to rule out Facebook as a as a, a measure of, of how people feel about things that we do in the city, alongside other things. Well, we didn't do that so much on this occasion, so there was a lot of emotion in all the responses, and it actually took a lot to read through as many as I could to know how people really felt, to know if the feedback was truly wildly negative or if it was just 20 people that were wildly negative overshadowing 40 people that were in. So um, uh, that's, that, you know, we, we'll probably use Facebook again in the future, as what I'm thinking, but not in the way that we used it this time, because it is, uh, it can be a valuable tool in addition to some other tools. And I, I, I'm uh, going no for this, not because I am against the notion, because I do believe uh, the city has constantly spoken about wanting a walkable, bikeable community. It comes through in all of the other surveys that we've done, and I think this was a measure to help that basic concept of, of making a nice, uh, easy city to get around for your dogs, for your children. And it's a small thing that we might be able to do that may feel painful at the beginning because it's a change and we see that with other changes we make that are that affect everyone in the city but over time it just feels natural and this might have been one of those instances uh, but in this case the feedback was overwhelmingly not in favor of the idea just because i think of the way that we handled it so we'll do a better job handling it in the future so um, unfortunately, in this case, I think the lowest cost alternative to do it is while we're doing a road. Mm -hmm. So it will be more expensive to do this in the future. We know that we'll have to really give it some thought if we decide to do it, but that's, that's where it fell. So uh, uh, it's not to rule out the idea, but to say that we'll group it with other things that we're doing to make the city a nice, walkable, bikeable community. Okay, can I, I just want to make a quick yeah. comment? Sure. This is going to be quick. Um, as Ann mentioned, I, you know, I did just campaign recently and everybody talked to me about that it. It was the number one thing everybody talked about was safety of their children, people going too fast. That's the number one thing when people see me, they approach me about. So I am for traffic calming measures. Obviously, again, I'm just, I don't want to beat the horse, it's dead, but I think we could do a better job of communicating this out next time. And I am excited that we're going to be doing, you know, a calming, like education situation. So you got, so we can educate you. And we can all learn together and, and figure out what's best for everybody to make it so people are excited about these calming measures and realize the good and that there is a positive takeaway for all this. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to not move forward on this. Can we take a vote, please? Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Frizier? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Commissioner Wall? Yes. Mayor Menstrup? Yes. Motion carries. Go ahead. Next item, the 2018 City Commission Goals and Objectives. Uh, this is an annual exercise that we undertake with the City Commission to uh, state what our goals and objectives are. Um, the previous issue uh, is one, an example of something that comes out of the goals and objectives when we do projects. We try to forward these uh, through everything we do in the city, but it's obviously much more than just issues like we just yeah. dealt with. Um, and not every project survives the stress test, which is how it's supposed to work. Um, 
We have reviewed these in a workshop with the city commission and updated the list. These are included in the budget each year. It's an iterative process, so uh, they don't change much from year to year, but they do change for, uh, reflective of progress we've made on various issues and things that we've solved and things that we need to solve in the future. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about these. Well, I just I want to say that each year we prioritize even within all the goals and objectives and, and it was wonderful to see a review of last year's priorities and how well city administration responded to all those and how much progress we made. I just want to recognize yeah. you and, and the team for everything that you did. So it made it a lot easier to, to get rid of some of those priorities or at least move them down the list and bring up some others that we might have had not been able to push up there before. So. Right. There's a lot of good progress. So. It's always our roadmap for what we focus on. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are there any <coughs> comments before we make a motion? Mayor? Yes. Real quick. Yes. Um, <laughs> I just want to say um, <laughs> for residents, please, um, this is something that we develop in advance of the budgetary process. And, I, and as Jim has stated and the mayor just reiterated, these are like guiding principles. I would please encourage, I would definitely encourage all residents over the course of the year to review these. These are posted on the website under important documents. They're in two places. Uh, well, actually, they're look in the budget document. Yes. That's where they go. Right. So it's in this uh, agenda packet, and then they'll be in the, um, in the budget. Okay. Um, but I, I think this is a great opportunity for our neighbors, our residents to look over and agree or disagree um, because when issues like the previous agenda item came up uh, our administration our electeds are reviewing these and seeing how well our decisions or the agenda items line up with with these stated and agreed to goals and objectives so um, please view these as an opportunity to kind of see where we're coming from and see if they if you guys agree with them or not um, I know one that guided me on the, this previous one, and this is one that, you know, is under the Foster's Community Trust, is this idea about when there's choices of major consequence, you know, we want to collaborate with residents prior to making our decisions. So to me, uh, like I said previously, that was the spirit of, of my deliberation on the, in the previous agenda item. But I think this is a document that may go unnoticed, and I just wanted to highlight that, that this is a great opportunity for residents to just kind of, you know, do some uh, checking of the job that we're doing, the job City Hall is doing as far as, hey, are you guys meeting your goals and objectives? Are you acting in compliance with what you stated were your uh, goals, collectively, your goals and objectives? So I really like this document. Um, I fully support the, the items that are highlighted this year and look forward to next year, you know, if there's something that develops that we want to amend or change somehow, I would love to have the residents participate in, you know, crafting the goals and objectives um, that they're comfortable with. So, Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Is there a motion to approve the City Commission goals and objectives? Mayor, I move that the 2018 City of Pleasant Ridge City Commission goals and objectives statement be approved. Is there support? Support. Any further discussion? May we take a vote, please? Commissioner Wall? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Frizzett? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Mayor Wentzford? Yes. Those and objectives are approved. Next item, city manager's report. Two quick items, and both of them relate to uh, other things that we've heard tonight. Uh, the first is the Oakland Park uh, uh, Woodward intersection. Mm -hmm. We did do a uh, traffic review of that. I think we presented that at the city commission meeting mm -hmm. at some point. We have been working with MDOT uh, to talk about ways of implementing that. The stars may be aligning a little bit because MDOT next summer, 2019, um, has a project on the books to redo all the pedestrian crossings along Woodward. So uh, we're working right now to try to move our concept forward as part of that project. So no promises. Uh, we're at a point where it has to go to, um, you know there's certain hurdles when you're in an MDOT process and one of them is when it has to go to Lansing for signal review. <laughs> signal review? Yeah, the people you meet with in the room are all very friendly and accommodating, right. but then it goes to like the, you know, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Right, right. Mm. Right. That's we when have you no know control over that person. That's when you know, uh, you know, where you're at. 
so we've been working to get to that stage in the process, so you know, don't um, hold your breath, but uh, I think it's promising um, at this point. The other thing is we are working on a new website. Uh, this is something that, you know, our circa 2002 website we have. It's antique. It is. <laughs> uh, we're going to send it to the Smithsonian when we're done with it. But uh, we have been working on a new website. Uh, we're going to be rolling that all out once we get done working out the bugs and putting the final um, fit and finish and polish on it. The thing I'm most excited about the website is that it's going to allow us to better use Facebook how it should be used to get public input. The public input shouldn't happen on Facebook um, for all the reasons we talked about tonight. Really, the public Facebook should point people to where the input actually occurs. Because uh, for whatever reason, you know, we've talked about a lot of the issues. When we're getting municipal input on city issues, it should be hosted on a city forum. And a new website will allow us to, to much, much better accommodate that uh, in, a, in a good way. And then to use Facebook to make people aware that something's happening and push you there to have the discussion. So uh, we are excited about the new website. I cannot, 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 cannot wait to roll it out because the old one is old. Cool. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're working on that. Expect new and good things on the website front soon. So good. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Unless there's any questions you have for me. None. All right. Next item, other business. Who's got some other business? <laughs> I know you've got. Other okay, business. really quick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is got, it. I'm got a book limiting club. myself it's it's a book to, to <laughs> the <laughs> only. 30 more words, okay. <laughs> Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, a novel. This is the book club for April. Uh, tomorrow, we're meeting April 11th at the Community Center, 7 o'clock, to discuss Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. There, I said it two times. I wasted words there. But this is the May book, Grown Up Anger, The Connected Mysteries of Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie, and the Calumet Massacre of 1913. This is by Daniel Wolf. Yeah. Uh, this is at 7 o'clock, Wednesday, May 9th, at the Community Center. Um, very excited about this one. Um, the author traces the history of uh, the Calumet Massacre of 1913. It was a labor dispute where uh, women and children were killed in the Upper Peninsula uh, during a false fire announcement. There was a stampede and many lives were taken. Um, the strike breakers were blamed for that massacre. Uh, Woody Guthrie was inspired by the tragedy to write a song. And then Bob Dylan, when he was um, becoming... Uh, it's a funny subject. So when, he was be when he was becoming uh, aware politically, he looked to this incident as an influence on him. So, and Bob Dylan influenced a generation. So. Uh, very important uh, issue and one I'm really eager to get into. And that's it. Cool. Thank you. More than 30 words. I'm sorry. Good job, Jason. That's a wrap. <laughs> any, any other business? <laughs> okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> Come on. You said yes? Yes, I'm making a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>